Now, one character I've always found interesting in Percy Jackson is Clarice LaRue, because there is something about Clarice that makes me think that if she wasn't on the good guy's side, we probably would not have won the Titan War. Now, Clarice, as we see in The Last Olympian, is very much one of the defining factors for how they win the war. Because if she hadn't come in with reinforcements from Ares' cabin and, you know, destroyed the dragon and terrified the hell out of all of their enemy, they would have been overwhelmed at this point and probably wouldn't have made it any further. But even with that, in Sea of Monsters and even in the Battle of the Labyrinth, Clarice is basically a defining character. She helps them figure so many things out that if they didn't have her intelligence and expertise in those areas, they probably would have been screwed on so many occasions. And yet, she is continuously forgotten about both by the characters and even resented by the characters in the books, considering all the things that she does. I know she started off as a bully, but just imagine that on a larger scale. Imagine if Clarice was a villain. And that's what I'm talking about today. Because if Clarice was a villain, we'd all be screwed. And I just want to talk about it because I love Clarice and I kind of like this headcanon idea. <laughs> so let's get into it. Now there are various different things that could have happened that could have led to Clarice becoming a villain. And there are three things in particular. The first one being Ares as an abusive father. Now I've talked about this a little bit in my Ares video, which I'll be carding here. And Honestly, if they kept his characteristic, because obviously I wasn't a fan of it, keeping his characteristic of being an abusive father, 100% I believe would lead to Clarice joining Luke's side. She's someone who's resented by her father for being both a female warrior, but also just for existing seemingly. He's physically abusive and physically cruel to his children, Clarice seemingly in particular. We've not heard any other stories about her other siblings. We only know about Clarice's specific treatment from her abusive father. So I believe that just from that alone, that could have pushed her to joining Luke's side, even being maybe the spy on the inside. But I don't think Clarice is the sort of person to be a spy. I can see her just suddenly one day no longer being at camp. And as it turns out, when Percy goes on a quest, she's one of the people that he's facing. Now, I know that Percy has beaten Clarice in battle before, but I think if she had the right motivations, and in this case, hating her father for being a dick, is definitely a good motivation. So I think Percy would have struggled a lot if Clarice was on the other side, especially if her father is the reason why she's there. The second one is from the hatred that the other cabins have towards the Ares cabin. And this is something that I've never really appreciated in, in the books in general, is the fact that there are two cabins, Ares and Aphrodite, and the Hunters of Artemis as well, who are for some reason just <laughs> hated by everyone else. The Ares cabin are obviously, they're the jocks. They're the jocks. That's literally what they are. That is their characteristic. And they are hated by everyone else. No one likes the Ares cabin because they are the bullies, which again, stereotypical, but let's say that is, that's fine and that's the situation. I can see Clarice also, I mean, even see in the books that she is fed up of how the camp treats her and her cabin and her siblings because they're, a, they're Ares kids and Ares himself is considered to be an unliked god. And so his children are automatically unliked as well. I can see that leading to further resentment on Clarice's side, which pushes her to the edge of, again, spying or joining the other side. Because what is the point of staying at a camp that hates her very existence and her siblings' existence? So why would she fight for them when they wouldn't even fight for her? And I can see that as a big reason, because honestly, I would be the same. If I'm not supported by people who are supposedly meant to be on my side, or I'm meant to be supporting their side while they clearly wouldn't support me, why would I want to stand and fight with them? I wouldn't. 
Would you? Would you want to fight with someone who clearly does not respect or like you? I don't think anyone would. It would feel like a justifiable reason for Clarice to join Luke's side. And probably take the whole cabin with her as well. That's why I think Camp Halfblood would struggle if Clarice was able to get her cabin on side, which I think she very much would, considering the hatred for the that the rest of the camp has against the Ares cabin. Third one, and this kind of ties into the second one admittedly, but it is one that's discussed more heavily in the books and is the reason why Clarice initially doesn't allow her cabin to go and fight in Manhattan for against the Titans. And that is the fact that the only time the Ares cabin and Ares is respected is when there is a war. That is the only time that respect and care for them is ever given. And even then, the respect is very limited and isn't something that, basically you can tell that the only reason why they're being quote unquote nice to you is because they need something from you. And the moment they've gotten that, they're no longer gonna treat you that way. They're gonna go back to the same way they were before. And I can see that being a further and almost final frustration for Clarice and her cabin of being like, you don't respect us as people. You see us in a sense as, oh, what is the word I wanna use? As shields, is that what I wanna say? They wanna use them as the frontline warriors basically. So they'll be the ones who, would, who die first in a sense because they're the warriors and that's all they are. So they should go on the front line and be sacrificial figures in a sense for our benefit. Use them and then everyone else, we can use what they've got an advantage for us for after they're all gone. That's definitely the image that I get of how the Ares cabin is looked at, is that they are the frontline fighters, the ones that people are like, yeah, they're really important, but they're gonna die, so they're not the most important. They're the ones that are just gonna get things started. And I think the Ares cabin recognizes that, and Chloe definitely recognized that a little bit in the books, even if it was for slightly selfish reasons as well. But as a whole, that would definitely be a, a, that would definitely be a final thing that would push the Ares cabin and Clarice in particular to the other side. All of that combined in general, I believe would lead to Clarice joining the other side, or at least could be a reason why she does. And 100%, if Clarice and the Ares cabin all joined the other side of the Titan War, I don't think Camp Half-Blood would win. The only reason why they found success in that battle is because of Ares' cabin. If Ares' cabin and Clarice hadn't come at that point, they would have lost, like 100%. We get that sense in the books that everything leading up to that moment was gonna lead to their downfall if Ares' cabin hadn't come to help. So that's why I think it'd be really interesting if Clarice had ended up as a villain because of all these reasons, because she was rejected and hated at Camp Parflood for being an Ares child, because she was abused by her father and that resentment of him being a, her godly parent would grow. And the fact that the only reason why Ares are occasionally respected is to be, in a sense, sacrificial figures in a war because war is all they're good for. I don't know, it just would have been a really fascinating character analysis of her for her to join the Titans for that very reason. Sort of like Ethan Nakamura, but more developed, really, because Ethan deserved more development, but that's a different story. But what do you guys think? Do you think it would have been interesting for Clarice to become a villain? And do you think it's possible that she could have become a villain based on all the reasons I laid out? Let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. As always, thank you all so much for joining this video and watching. I truly do appreciate it. Check out my social media in the description box, my Patreon, if you can support me there. Can't support me financially? Hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, drop a thumbs up, a comment, share with your friends. And um, yeah, again, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.